Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Can you speak like this? Let's talk about it. Let's imagine this scene. You're sitting in class and there's just no way that you can keep up. The teacher is talking too fast and all of the concepts are just advanced or maybe too boring for you. So you start to fall asleep and eventually you just give in and sleep on your desk. Has that ever happened to you? I'm ashamed to say it has definitely happened to me. One time in geometry class, I fell asleep. That's another story for another time. <laughs> you just heard me use two amazing phrasal verbs, to keep up and to give in. And today you are going to learn a lot of common phrasal verbs that you can add to your daily life so that when you speak, you can speak exactly the way you want to and impress other people with your amazing skills. But first, let's answer the question, what in the world is a phrasal verb? Well, a phrasal verb is a two or three part verb. Let's take a look at the ones I just used. To keep up. To keep is our main verb here, and then we add the word up. This is called a participle, sometimes a preposition, and together, to keep up is very different than just to keep. The other phrasal verb I used is to give in. We have the word give plus the participle in. To give is very different than to give in. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to accurately use these phrasal verbs so that you don't accidentally use the wrong word. And of course, to help you remember everything that you learn in today's lesson, I've created a free PDF worksheet that you can download with the link in the description. There will be all of today's phrasal verbs, all of the definitions, a lot of sample sentences, and at the end of the worksheet, you can answer Vanessa's challenge question. So click on the link in the description to download this free PDF worksheet today. All right, let's get started. In today's lesson, you will see three of my most popular phrasal verb lessons, including examples from everyday life. I hope that you will learn a lot. Let's get started. To add up, to add up. At the end of the month, I have to add up all my purchases. I have to add them up. It's a lot. To bring up, to bring up. He brings up sports in every conversation and she doesn't know what to say. He always brings it up. To blow up. To blow up. She's gonna blow up when she realizes that her friend lied to her. She's gonna blow up. To end up. To end up. I wonder how the story will end up. Will the characters fall in love? Will they be killed? I wonder how it will end up. To back up, to back up. Don't forget to back up your computer so that you don't lose all your hard work. Don't forget to back it up. To show up, to show up. Why did Dan show up at my door? Oh, he lives here. To keep up with, to keep up with. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with the mail, bills, and messages. How can I keep up with it? I don't know. To get along with, to get along with. We get along with each other because we both like games. We get along with each other, especially when I win the game. That's the best. To agree with, to agree with. I don't agree with this article. In fact, I don't agree with it at all. To deal with, to deal with. When you have two cats, you have to deal with a lot of cat fur. You have to deal with it. To hang out. To hang out. 
My cats like to hang out with each other. They are best friends. They love hanging out. To check in, to check out. We have to check in at the hotel after 3 p.m. and check out at 11 a.m. To fill out, to fill out. He is filling out a job application. Do you think he'll get the job as a professional model? He's filling it out right now. We'll see. To figure out, to figure out. I can't figure out why my tree died so quickly. Maybe I gave it too much water? To find out, to find out. Vanessa found out that Dan was really a woman. She found it out. Oh my goodness. To cut down on, to cut down on. He's trying to cut down on sweets, especially chocolate chip cookies. Mmm. To count on, to count on. You can always count on me to offer you tea when you visit my house. I have a lot of tea. To try on, to try on. He didn't try on the shoes when he bought them. Oh no, they don't fit. It's just too bad. To keep on, to keep on. Maybe if I keep on drinking coffee all night, I can finish my report. Just keep on drinking. To break into, to break into. Late last night, Dan secretly broke into my hidden stash of chocolate. Oh no! Who broke into my chocolate? It's a disaster! To get into to get into. Even though Dan is an adult, he got into Pokemon last week. He plays non-stop and won't stop looking at it. He's really into it. To bump into, to run into. Last week I bumped into my college friend on the sidewalk. I can't believe I ran into him here. To apply for, to apply for. I decided not to apply for a visa because it's too expensive. I didn't apply for it. To look for, to look for. I looked for my cat's toys and I found them under the piano. I'm glad I looked for them there. To drop out of, to drop out of. She told him that she decided to drop out of the program because it was too hard. She dropped out of it. To make fun of, to make fun of. Dan made fun of Vanessa's new style. He laughed at her a lot, but she didn't like being made fun of. She felt really sad. To break down, to break down. A good teacher will break down a complicated topic so that it's more understandable. He's breaking it down for his student, and she understands it. To give in, to give in. Even though I was on a diet, I gave in when he offered me a cookie. It was too hard to resist. To call back, to call back. I called him one hour ago. Why didn't he call me back yet? What's he doing? To come across. To come across. I came across a fascinating fact about Steve Jobs in his biography. He said that doing drugs was one of his top three most important experiences in life. To go through. To go through. Dan is going through a hard time because he doesn't have any more coffee. Will he survive? 
to get over, to get over. It was hard for me to get over the death of my oldest cat. He was 18 years old and I loved him a lot. To look forward to, to look forward to. After a long, busy day, he looks forward to playing the piano and relaxing his mind. It's so nice. Buying. Try on, get into, fit into. Dan is trying on this striped shirt. He already tried on a red one. Which one should he get? He tried it on. Do you think that Dan will be able to get into this shirt? He used to fit into it 30 years ago. Dressing. Put on, throw on, have on, take off. Dan puts on a hoodie because it's a little bit chilly outside today. He puts it on. He's late for work, so he's just going to throw on his hoodie and run out the door. He's throwing it on. Dan has had on his hoodie all day, even though it's spring. He had it on. After wearing his hoodie all day, he is finally ready to take it off. Closing. Zip up, button up, tuck in, roll up. Dan zips up his coat to get ready to go outside. He zips it up. He makes sure to button up his dress shirt carefully before his date with me. He buttons it up. After buttoning it up, it's time to tuck in his shirt. He tucks it in. It's warm this afternoon, so Dan decides to roll up his sleeves before going outside. He rolls them up. Fancy. Dress up, dress up like. Dan is really dressing up for this date. Do you think he's going to change his pants? Dan is dressed up like an annoying tourist. Notice the difference between dress up, which is fancy, and dress up like, which is to imitate the way someone dresses. Weather. Bundle up, wrap up, strip down. Don't forget to bundle up before you go outside. Make sure you wrap up. It's cold out there. When Dan got inside, it was so hot that he needed to strip down. Ah, that feels better. Old. Wear out. Dan wore his favorite shorts so much that now they are completely worn out. He wore them out. Shoes. Slip on, slip off, lace up, break in, kick off. Dan slips on his shoes before he goes outside. He slips them on. He quickly slips them off every time he goes inside the house. Dan is lacing up his hiking boots, and then he ties the laces into a double knot. He laces them up. These are new boots, so Dan needs to break them in for a few days. Dan kicks off his hiking boots after a long hike. Ah, oh, that feels good. He kicks them off. Modifying. Let out. Take in. This shirt is a little too small. Dan needs to get it let out if he wants to wear it comfortably. The tailor will let it out. Dan really likes these pants, but they're too big. Maybe he will get them taken in professionally. The tailor will take them in. Tidying. Fold up, hang up, put away. After washing his favorite cat tank top, Dan folds it up carefully. Now that this video is finished, Dan hangs up his coat and puts it away in the closet. He hangs it up. 
Now I'd like to give you a little test. Do you think you can fill in the blank with the correct phrasal verb? I'm gonna read a sentence with a blank and I want you to think about which phrasal verb would be best in the sentence. And then I'm gonna read the sentence a second time with the correct phrasal verb. I'd like you to also try to read these sentences out loud with me. It's gonna be a great chance to remember the phrasal verbs because you're speaking out loud and also you're trying to think of which one's the best fit. All right, let's get started. After going to Paris, Dan felt inspired to more often instead of wearing sweatpants and a hoodie every day. After going to Paris, Dan felt inspired to dress up more often instead of wearing sweatpants and a hoodie every day. He went to the store to some classy shirts. What do you think goes in the blank? Hmm. He went to the store to try on some classy shirts. First, he, his hoodie that was after years of daily use. First, he took off his hoodie that was worn out after years of daily use. As he was the first colored shirt, he took a look in the mirror. As he was buttoning up the first colored shirt, he took a look in the mirror. Vanessa was going to love his new style. <laughs> he carefully the shirts and came out of the dressing room to look at the shoe selection. He carefully hung up the shirts and came out of the dressing room to look at the shoe selection. He, some brown dress shoes, but all of the shoes seemed too stiff and uncomfortable. He laced up some brown dress shoes, but all the shoes seemed too stiff and uncomfortable. It would take too long to... So Dan decided just to buy the shirts. It would take too long to break them in, so Dan decided to just buy the shirts. Half classy was better than not classy at all. <laughs> all right, now I'm gonna read the story out loud all together one more time. I want you to try to read it out loud with me to exercise your pronunciation, to challenge your memory, and just to be able to use English. All right, let's read that full story. After going to Paris, Dan felt inspired to dress up more often instead of wearing sweatpants and a hoodie every day. He went to the store to try on some classy shirts. First, he took off his hoodie that was worn out after years of daily use. As he was buttoning up the first colored shirt, he took a look in the mirror. Vanessa was going to love his new style. He carefully hung up the shirts and came out of the dressing room to look at the shoe selection. He laced up some brown dress shoes, but all the shoes seemed too stiff and uncomfortable. It would take too long to break them in, so Dan decided to just buy the shirts. Half classy was better than not classy at all. Mm. Every morning, I wake up to my alarm clock, or I wake up to my baby. I try not to doze off again and push snooze, but sometimes I do. Finally, I turn off my alarm clock and roll out of bed. Notice the pronunciation of this phrasal verb, to roll out of bed. I didn't say I roll out of bed, I said I roll out of bed. The T here is gonna to change to a D sound. And this means that you are not so enthusiastic about waking up, you just roll out of bed. You could also say I get out of bed, that's a more neutral phrasal verb. But if you want to let people know you are really tired when you woke up this morning, you might say, oh, when my alarm clock went off, I just, rolled out of bed, walked to the car, and went to work. <laughs> you are kind of like a zombie this morning. You just rolled out of bed. Next, I go into the bathroom and wash off my face. Wash off does not mean that I am completely erasing my face. You can just say, wash my face, but we can also use this phrasal verb, wash off my face, if you feel like you have some kind of dirt 
or grime that's kind of thick on your face. Maybe after you're sleeping, there's some, we call this sleep, that kind of crusty stuff in your eyes. You might want to wash the sleep out of your eyes. So we are washing it out. Wash the sleep out of my eyes or wash off my face. Next, I will put on some makeup. Usually I just put on some makeup under my eyes to mask how tired I really am, and I will put that away. Sometimes I put on my glasses for the day, and sometimes I choose to put in my contacts. Now we're saying put on my glasses because they're going on my face, but I'm putting in my contacts because they're going effectively in my eyeball. <laughs> they're going in my eyes, so I put in my contacts and I put on my glasses. After I've washed off my face, put on some makeup, put in my contacts or put on my glasses, it's time to brush out my hair. We could say simply brush out my hair and that means you're getting the knots out of your hair or it could mean that you're taking your hair out of some kind of thing. For me, this is a braid, so I'm taking my hair out of the braid and I'm brushing out my hair. It's kind of like erasing the knots from my hair. I'm brushing out the knots from my hair and now it is wavy. Usually I do this on days that I record videos. On other days, my hair is just a wild mess. <laughs> <laughs> but because I am recording a video today, you get to see behind the scenes. Taking my hair out of braids, it is a simple and easy way to have uh, wavy hair. And I think it's a lot of fun. You get to have braids, you get to have wavy hair, and it's, uh, as you can see, takes 10 seconds. Amazing. That's what I like the most. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I hardly ever have my hair down. This is what it's called when your hair is not tied back. This is a hair tie. There are a lot of regional words for what to call this thing. <laughs> I call it a hair tie. But because I'm a mother, I have two young children, I'm always looking down or helping or playing and uh, working in the garden. I'm always doing a lot of things. I can't have my hair in my face. So that means that I need to use a hair tie and I need to tie back my hair. We can use two different phrasal verbs for this. We can say tie back or tie up. And you can kind of get the, the image here. I'm tying it back or I'm tying it up. And it means the same thing. I'm making this. Do you know what this is called? It's a little bit strange. It's called a ponytail. A pony is a small horse. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get the image of a tail of a horse. Kind of looks like this, right? Swish, swish, swish. <laughs> so I'm making a ponytail uh, in the back of my hair. What if I had two? What if I had two of these and I wanted to tie up my hair like this? Ooh, do you know what these are called when you have two hair ties? Well, it is not a ponytail because ponies don't have two tails. <laughs> Instead, these are called pigtails. <laughs> uh, pigs don't have two tails, but I guess this is just referring to how a tail of a pig is kind of curly. Maybe originally pigtails were kind of curly. I'm not exactly sure, <laughs> but these are pigtails. Uh, sometimes I wear pigtails, sometimes I don't, but they kind of get in the way when I'm trying to do things. So usually I use that first expression. I tie back my hair or I use a clip and we could say I pull back my hair. So here you can see I'm pulling back my hair and putting it up in this clip. So here we used similar ideas, but with two different verbs. To tie up, to tie back, to pull up, and to pull back. It just depends on what kind of device you're using, a clip or a hair tie. They're kind of interchangeable too. You can pull back your hair with a hair tie. No one's going to 
figuratively split hairs over this. <laughs> this means get upset about small little differences. Nobody's gonna get upset about these small differences, so you can use them interchangeably. Next, very important, I've got my toothbrush and I need to put on the toothpaste and simply brush my teeth. I need to spit out the toothpaste. After spitting out the toothpaste, I need to put back my toothbrush into the little toothbrush cup. Now that I'm ready from the shoulders up, I need to get dressed. Specifically, I need to pick out my clothes. I think I'm going to wear this dress today. It's a lovely summer day. So I picked this out. I do have a closet where I could put clothes, but for some reason I just like to have this little bar here. <laughs> <laughs> to put my most used clothes on. I find myself more likely to hang them up and to take care of them if it's really close to my bed where I get changed. Uh, I change my clothes before I go to bed. It's easy for me to remember this. Uh, I also have some drawers, some dresser drawers with some clothes in them uh, like socks or pants, things like this, but it is summertime so I'm going to only wear this sundress that I picked out. Usually by then my baby is awake and it's time for me to pick him up. Good morning, baby. Uh. <laughs> is that how you feel about the morning? Uh. You want to tell us what it's like to be a baby? What's it like to be a baby? Uh. Is that really what it's like? Uh. Oh, wow. Yeah, is that silly? I never drink coffee, but most mornings I make some tea. To make tea, I need to heat up some water in a kettle. We can call this a tea kettle, a hot water kettle, or just a kettle. <laughs> and after the water has heated up, I need to pour out the water into my teapot. After the tea has steeped for three or four minutes, I need to pour out the tea into my mug. Or we could say simply I need to pour the tea. Or we could say pour out the tea, that's fine. Or we could say I'm going to fill up my mug with some delicious tea. This is some green tea that I added some dried lavender too. I have a lavender bush in my yard and I put some dried lavender in here and added it to the green tea. Oh, it smells amazing. <laughs> I forgot to show you but I also whip up some breakfast. To whip up means that you're making something really quickly. Usually it's not very thoughtful, it's pretty simple and for me this morning I just whipped up a piece of toast. Typically, this means that you're making something instead of just cutting something. So, for example, part of my breakfast is this cantaloupe that came from our garden. A cantaloupe is a melon. I don't know if they have it in your country, but it's pretty typical here. We actually grew this in our garden. When I cut this cantaloupe, I wouldn't say that I whipped up the cantaloupe because I didn't make it. I didn't create this, even though, yes, it did come from our garden. But instead, because the toast, I put some butter on it, I put some jam on it, I actually made it in a way. We could say I whipped up some breakfast, but if you're just opening a granola bar and eating a granola bar, or if you're just cutting a piece of fruit and eating it, you're not really whipping up breakfast. You have to have some kind of making or creating that happens. So for me, I whipped up breakfast, I made a piece of toast, and then I cut up this cantaloupe. Finally, it's time for me to go over my plans for the day. Go over is simply another way to say review. Usually I try to be pretty organized because there's so much going on in my life. I have a toddler, a newborn, a husband, so I need to keep up my relationship. I'm also an individual, so I need to do things for myself as well, and I am your English teacher and I run my own English teaching business. So there's a lot of different hats that I have to wear 
for me, the key to my sanity <laughs> is to keep organized. So I usually have a list of the things that I want to accomplish that day or maybe that week. And in the morning, I go over my plans for the day. Because I work here from home, I don't need to go anywhere to work. But if you are going to the office at the end of your morning routine, when you open the door of your house and leave your house, you can say, I'm heading out the door. This isn't just your head going out the door. It just means that you're leaving your house. I'm heading out the door or I'm heading to work. We use that expression head to talk about the movement here. I'm heading out the door. I'm heading to work. Where are you going? I'm heading to work. Great, we can use this phrasal verb. Congratulations on learning so many real phrasal verbs for daily English conversation. Don't forget to download the free PDF worksheet in the description. You can click on that link and download all of these phrasal verbs, definitions, sample sentences, Vanessa's challenge question, and it is all free for you, my lovely students. And now I have a question for you. In the comments, can you use one of these phrasal verbs that you learned today? Use it in the comments, try to read your sentence out loud, and I look forward to seeing your sentences. This is a great chance to use what you've learned and remember it. Well, thank you so much for learning English with me. I will see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download the free PDF worksheet for this lesson. With this free PDF, you will master today's lesson and never forget what you have learned. You can be a confident English speaker. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for a free English lesson every Friday. Bye.